We're going to get you out of here in a few minutes. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, amen, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Father God, your word said where there are two or three of us gathered in your name, that you would be a God in the midst. And Father God, we thank you this morning that you are Jehovah, so long that you're our peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. And Father God, we just release by faith in the name of Jesus. We release the agape, the God kind of love over every heart and every mind that is here this morning. And we say, Holy Spirit, you have free course this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do, do I need to remind y'all we'll be here tonight, right? At, at 7 o'clock. This first Sunday. So we, we always do our first Sunday. Y'all remember that, don't you, Drake? Amen. So get up uh, and come back. We ain't going to stay here long. Amen. Uh, um, but, but anyway, let, let's go to our first John chapter, chapter 4. And, and I, was, I was looking at this this morning. Um, let's start with verse 4. Ch chapter 4, verse 4. Amen. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. We are of God, he that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. That's right. And everyone that, listen to this, everyone that love, that, that love it is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knows not God, for God is love. Yes, yes. How many know that, that, that as born again Christians, and that we're supposed to walk in love? Amen. The Bible said he that loves is born of God. That's right. How many know that we can tell, amen, if you're a Christian by, Jesus said you will know them by what? By the love that they show one to another. Amen. So we're, we're supposed to walk in love. What, what kind of love are we talking about? We're supposed to walk in the agape love of God. And the Bible said in Romans 5 and 5 that what? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by what? By the Holy Ghost. So this kind of love that we're talking about is the agape love of God, Bethany. It, it's that unconditional love. Amen. It's that love that, that, that says in spite of how you treat me, I'm going to love you. How do you know that every born-again believer is supposed to walk in love? Amen. Amen? God is love. Y'all say that with me. God is love. God, God is love. love. Yes, it is. Amen. God, God is not trying to be love. God is love. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says if you are born of God, you will love. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I look at the church, and I, and I heard a preacher say this the other day. Sometimes we look at the church and we don't see the kind of love we should see. Yeah. How many know people are not loving with the agape love of God? We're, we're loving with this selfish human love. Oh, yes. It's true. It's selfish. Amen. It's, it's not the God kind of love. It's, it's, it's arrows, uh, uh, filios, brotherly love. But, but yet it's human. How I many of human love says this, Drenda, that I'm going to love you as long as you treat me right? That's not the God kind of love. That's the world kind of love. How I many you know that our love is so, it's supposed to be different? The Bible said they would know you by your love. How I many you know the reason we can't identify the church is because we're not seeing the love of God Amen. Being manifested. The world can't. Amen. When the world look at the church, they see us judging one another. They see us gossiping about one another. They see how we treat our families. They see how we treat one another. Amen. They, they see what we do in our marriages. They see what we do in our families. Right. Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. And we said that we're the church of the living God. All right, man. We said that we're children of God, but really, we don't walk in the kind of Love that God walked in. How many know the Bible said while we was yet sinners, God loved us? Yes. How many know that He loved us when we didn't deserve it? Amen. When we should have been in hell. Amen. Amen. He loved us so much that Jesus became a 
a substitute. Amen. He gave up his only son, amen, to deliver us, to save us. And how many know that we should be able to show that kind of love toward one another? That's right. Amen. So that means as born-again Christians, I shouldn't walk around with a selfish, unforgiving attitude. Mm. Amen. I should. Because if I'm born of God, if God is my daddy, to be born of God means that, that, that God's my, he's my father, he's my daddy, he's my Abba, and then I'm, I'm his child, he's my father. And so I should have the attributes of my father, right? That's right. That's right. And then let's go. Because when you look at the church, you don't see, you don't see love. You don't see the type of love that should be in families and, and be in homes, man. Amen. The church, amen, marriages and family break up just like the world do. Amen. Yes. Yes. But you know what I found now? And God said this to me yesterday. Well, not yesterday. He said this a couple of days ago. He said, Victor, it's impossible to walk in my love. And not forgive. Amen. You can't say you're born of God and have His love and don't forgive. That's, That's true. right. That's true. Amen. Y'all remember when when they was asking Jesus about a, uh, asked Jesus about uh, who would be? There was he was dealing with this man who had died and his wife. And his, his brother's wife was left alive. And, and, and so they were trying to catch Jesus in the trap. And Jesus said to him, he said, he said, he said, in heaven there won't be marriage and giving them marriage. Right. <laughs> for he said, for we shall be like the angels. But they were trying to catch Jesus in the trap. And Jesus told him, he said, listen, he said, the only reason I allowed Moses to give a writing of divorce because y'all couldn't forgive one another. Right. He said, because in the beginning, this was not so. How many know that? And listen to this. When man fell in the garden, the knowledge of good and evil entered his consciousness. For, and, and this might sound crazy and foreign to you, but for the first time, when Adam ate of that tree, choice entered the garden. Somebody said Adam was a free will being. Adam was created like God. Adam didn't know good and evil. Jealousy, envy, strife, and all of that was not in the garden. Adam was full of the agape love of God. He walked in love, but after man sinned, then the knowledge of good and evil entered the garden. And guess what happened? When Adam messed up, his sins fell upon his son. Cain killed Abel. Jealousy entered in. Wow, listen, listen to this. Don't you, now listen to this. The only way jealousy can enter into a relationship is when insecurity comes in, right? So that means somewhere, somebody feel like they was not being loved no more. They feel like somebody was better than them. And then for the first time, they was thinking outside of the thoughts of God. And they start comparing themselves one to another. How many know that we shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't compare ourselves one to another? Adam and Eve, when they fell, because when he saw what Abel offered to, offered to God, he was jealous of his offering. And God came down and told him, he said, Cain, man, man, change your countenance. Amen. If, if, amen. What's what, 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 if you giving me your best is accepted? Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. Lord. How many know we got to give God our best? That's right. And then, you, you know, God loved us when we messed up. That's right. Now think about this. Adam failed. Sin came upon all men. Good and evil entered the earth. Just imagine if Adam never had ate of the tree <laughs> of knowledge and good and evil. Adam would have still been walking like God. Mm -hmm. Even though he was in the image of God. He lost the life of God. 
And I tell people all the time, you, you better be careful. You, you really have to be careful. I mean, what, what, what you seek after. The knowledge that you receive, because sometimes you can receive something that will mess your life up. I've met people that, 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 that wanted so much revelation and insight, and when they got it, it messed their whole life up. But because some things that you receive, it's, it's, it's too heavy for your head if you, if you, if you get it from, and, and you got to wait. Sometimes you got to wait till God give it to you. Because right. a lot of times we ain't mature enough to handle it. Yes. And I believe that God would have eventually allowed Adam to grow because God knew good and evil. That there was no everything that was in God was already in Adam. That's right. But he had just not tapped into that that, that part of him. Because trust me, the Bible said God created both good and evil. Hmm. And if it's in God, it's in him. I mean, sometimes there, there's a lot of things in us that if we'll seek the face of God, God will release that treasure that's in your vessel. Mm -hmm. But before Adam didn't know nothing but God. He, he knew love. That's what he operated in love. Amen. The whole universe operated on love. There was no evil operating in the universe. Everything was subject to Adam. Everything was under the authority of Adam. Adam was walking like, I mean, as a child of God. And you know the Bible said that God created Adam in his image. And we said before, the word image in the, in the Hebrew is translated, God, it actually should have said God created him a little lower than Elohim. He was created to be, amen, amen, a, a little lower than God. But he was like God. And how I many are we supposed to be like God? Whatever God is, that's what we're supposed to be. God is love. We're supposed to be love. We're supposed to forgive. We're supposed to walk in kindness. The Bible says if we don't forgive one another, in Matthew 6, it says we don't forgive one another. Our Heavenly Father won't forgive us, right? So we're supposed to have hearts of forgiveness. I don't care what nobody do to you. You gotta forgive. Because, brother, Sean, the only way God can turn it around is that you're walking in love. You remember Job and then his, his, his friends turned against him, and the Bible said he prayed for his enemies, and God turned his captivity. God gave him everything he lost back. I mean, no, sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, all the time, we need to forgive and walk in love and not walk in hatred, not walk in unforgiveness, because hatred and unforgiveness ties up our blessings. So guess what? So what if she want to leave? I'm going to love you? Go on. I'm going to forgive you? Go on. Like I'm trying to tell you, I don't care what happens in life, whether it's with your family, whether it's with friends, you got to say, hey, guess what? Guess, guess what? I love you, but I can live without you. That's right. Amen. Wow. Yeah. I can't live without Jesus, but I can live without you. And a lot of people can't live without them, so they get rid of Jesus, and they go with the person. And I mean, you you heading for failure. That's right. yes. Yes. And that's why I was trying to tell you this morning, the best thing to do is let it die so God can resurrect it. Amen. And you got to show, you got to show love. You got to show love. Amen. You got to get the word of God in your heart. Because how do you know, Sean, the only thing you can do is ask a person to forgive you. Now, if you do your part, then you got to let God deal with that other heart. Mm -hmm. But if, if your heart is sincere in love, God, and you pray for those people, or that person, God will change the situation while you're praying. Mm -hmm. And you got to show love, you got to show kindness. Amen. The Bible says, uh, harsh words stir up strife. That means when I when I see him, I got to be just as nice as I was when I first met him. Amen. That's hard. <laughs> but you got to press through your flesh. You got to walk in the spirit. Yeah. So when you're talking about walking in agape love, that, that means God, when I, even when you have the right to be angry, you got to forgive. Yeah. <laughs> even when they think, they, 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 you know, some, some people are deeply deceived. They think they're right when they're wrong. Right. Yeah, that's the truth. And it's a sad thing to be wrong and think you're right. Yeah, it is. And the Bible said in the last days that the love of men would wax cold. Yeah. 
And the scripture talks about how that their conscience will be sealed with a with, with a hard life. I mean, they're, they're, and I see it every day. People, amen, they the, the kind of unforgiveness and hatred they walk in and self-righteousness, pride, and arrogance. They'll do you wrong and they won't even acknowledge it. That's right. <laughs> And all the time they wrong, but they point their finger all day long at you. And I'm thinking, you know, why can't you see me, but you can't see yourself? All right, come on, <laughs> come on now. Because wow. <laughs> one thing about it, now this is me. I have to say to myself, God, I got to look at me. And I always do that all the time. I say, God, if I've done something wrong, help me. That's right. Yes, oh, that Chris Dollar wrote a book years ago. I read that book. The Lord, teach me how to love. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to have God to teach us how to love. Yeah. And you know what? Who was, what's his name? Um, I was listening to him preach one time. Noel Jones. He said something one day that just kind of blew my mind. <laughs> because when you think about it, he said, he said, we really don't have the capacity to love. Mm. Mm. Not without Jesus. That's right. Because our love is limited. As humans, we love you based upon what you do. Mm. Wow. Works. So your love is limited. God love is lim God love is not limited. And then God loves you. And then even when you messed up, but but human love, philios, or uh, eros, where we said philios, which is brotherly love, and then it's limited. And even in a marriage, arrows, romantic love. She cute, pretty, and fine until she mess up. He handsome, big, and strong until he mess up. Because you, you was rom you was looking at things too. Amen. Uh, romantic eyes. You were just so in love until he did something you didn't like. And then you fell out of love. How do you tell me something? How how do you fall out of love? And I'm going to tell you, if, if, if you falling out of love, you never had the love of That's God. Right. That's wow. right. Exactly. Now, I know if somebody beats you up and mistreats you, now you can't be no fool. You get out of there yeah. and you run for your life. But what I'm trying to say is this, is that, that when you're really born again and you say you love God and you're walking in love, how is it that you can say you're walking in agape love and you cannot reconcile and work things out with other people in your life? Some of the most smartest, educated folks are some of the most hateful. Because they're trying to figure it out. They, they got their mindset. But God going to grab somebody off the street and raise them up in the church that's going to show the love of God. Because guess what? They ain't got nothing to lose. God delivered them. God saved them. So they said, hey, God, God, I love you so much. Whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. They ain't going to try to think about it. They ain't going to try to figure it out. But they're going to love and God going to use a mighty little and God said, I'm trying to get the church back to the place where they're walking in love. When we walk in love, that's when we're going to see the supernatural power of God. When the agape love of God, that supernatural love that's poured out through the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Right. The Bible said this love, the Romans said, the love of God is poured into our hearts uh, by the Holy Ghost. So when this love is poured on the inside of you, you can't help but forgive. Mm -hmm. That's right. And God, and, and you know, God said to me, and I don't try to be a judge because I'm not. But God's a victim. Look at the church. The Bible said we are the light of the world, a city that sits on a hill that can't be hid. Right? We are light that shines in darkness. <laughs> What's that light? That light is supposed to be love. They're supposed to see how we love one another. They're supposed to see how we treat one another in the church. That's right. I'm going to say something that's real deep. It's so deep you just, you just ain't going to be able to handle it. <laughs> it's so deep to it's simple. It's deep, trust me. Trust me, it's deep. But it's simple. He that is joined to the Lord is of one spirit. Mm -hmm. How many 
know that we are all, Paul said, we, 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 we baptize, amen, into Christ. We're married to him. Mm -hmm. We're in relationship with him. We're all one spirit in Christ. Yeah. We're all one body in Christ. Y'all know what Paul said in Ephesians 5.20. He said, behold, I speak a mystery, but he said, he said, I'm talking about marriage, but he said, really, I'm talking about the church and Christ. Yeah. He that is joined to the Lord is of one spirit. How many know that? That, that Paul said, and Paul made some heavy statement. He said, let there be no divisions among us, but let us be perfectly joined together in oneness. You, you know what Paul is really saying? Paul is really saying this, and this, this kind of got me. Paul is saying this. L listen, just like a man and woman, when they're married, they become one flesh right. and one spirit. He said, when we all get born again and we're born of the Spirit, he said, guess what? We all become one Spirit. We become one with one another. And just like he said in Ephesians 20, how can a man yet hate his own flesh? How many know that when we hate one another and we dislike one another and we don't forgive one another, we're abusing our own bodies? Because we're one. Mm. Wow. But Pastor Bono, we ain't one. You ain't got my blood. <laughs> I said, no, but, 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 but we got the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're one spirit in Christ. Amen. How many of you belong to Jesus? Amen. How many of you are born again filled with the spirit and, and you belong to Jesus? Do, do you know what that means? That means we're supposed to be one body, the Bible said, but many members. That's right. <laughs> so Paul said something that was heaven. He said, in other words, what he was saying to this, so he saying was this. Just in case y'all didn't know it. <laughs> We are married in we are married in the spirit. We are going to. So when I mistreat you, I mistreat me. Mm. When I gossip about you, I'm gossiping about me. Mm. The Bible says, if you see your brother in the fall, you that are spiritual ought to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. How many you know that, that, that we're supposed to restore? When, when, and, and this is something I believe. When leaders fall, when things happen in people's families and things happen in their life, we're supposed to restore, not sit back and gossip and look and judge. And then we're supposed to forgive. We're supposed to pray for our brothers and sisters, for leaders and pastors. Because that's what love will do. Now, if you if your flesh and my flesh and bones are my bones, then we are one in Christ. And I think we don't understand our oneness. That's why we mistreat one another. Many members, one body. So what I do to me, I'm doing to me. If I talk about Drinder, I'm talking about me. Because right. we're all one in Christ Jesus. That's right. True. And there's no way we can walk in love, say we're walking in love, and don't forgive. Don't forgive. So we got to learn to let things go. Don't let, and you know what? Brother Sean, I got to the place that I don't, I, I'm not letting anything put me in bondage. Unforgiveness puts you in bondage. Every time I see you, I'm mad. I'm controlling your emotions. And some people know they control you. You know that, don't they? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, some people know you don't like them. And they are so up so they can make you mad, and just so they can laugh, and they be laughing under their breath. I know they don't like me, but 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 I'm coming anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they controlling you, and we should live in a place where people control our emotions. Amen. Well, amen. And that's really what's happening. When when when, when you walk in hatred towards somebody else, amen, they're controlling your life. That woman man mistreated you and they went on with their life. Mm -hmm. And you still 
y'all sitting at home thinking about it. <laughs> and mad. <laughs> and if they say something, you probably fight. <laughs> because that's how much of unforgiveness that we sometimes carry in our hearts. And But God said, listen, love you have to forgive. The word forgive actually means to release and to let go. Mm. A lot of us had released stuff. So God can't bless us the way he wants to. Because remember, a seed only grows in good ground. Mm -hmm. And if your heart have hatred in it and unforgiveness, mm -hmm. the seed God, won't grow. Don't. Wow. Not if you live with need to grow, you stay stuck. That's what a good, a good ground is on the heart of love. And some people wonder why they're not producing anything, but because that their ground is, is hard in places. Sometimes you forget I didn't have to dig that garden. Hey, some places was good and soft, but sometimes I come to places where, man, I had to really got to get down there and dig the rocks out. Amen. And, and, and sometimes I would get tired and say, oh, I ain't going to do all this. I, I didn't intend to do all this work, but I wanted to play it. So I had to get down there and dig. I got down there. I forced myself to get down there and, and pull up all them rocks and roots. Amen. In order for my vegetables to grow. And how many know that's in our own life? Sometimes we got to reach in. With the Bible tells us to, to examine ourselves. To see if we're, if we're in Christ. See if we're found in the faith. I mean, sometimes we got to do self-evaluation to say, God, you know what? Do I really forgive this person? Am I walking in hatred? Am I walking in anger? Because I'm telling you, Sean, sometimes we got a valid reason to be angry. <laughs> but still, even though I may have that right, that ain't what Jesus would do. The Bible said be angry, but sin not. Right. You know, so I don't sit around thinking about what somebody did to me. Mm -mm. And sometimes it's amazing to me because sometimes I, have you ever tried to make yourself mad? Because when you see, it's just you want, sometimes I be wanting to get mad about certain things and God just won't let me get yes, mad. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And I can say, God, you know what? I've come a long way. Yes, Lord. Because really, if I wasn't born again and saved, uh -huh. I would have been cussing those folk out. Right. <laughs> yeah. But because I'm born again and the love of God is in my heart, I can't do that. Don't y'all look at me like that, Pastor. I can't believe you said that. Some of y'all do it. Some of y'all probably doing it. <laughs> my pastor said, tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. It is the truth. But if you're going to walk in the agape love of God, you got to learn to forgive. You got to learn to love. All right, Pastor. We got, we got a couple more minutes. I just, I just want to talk about love for just a minute. Ye are of God, little children. Yes. Wow, y'all are God's children. Y'all know that? That means you're his seed. Mm. Or just, you know, you're the seed of God. Amen. Or that's everybody's here. Ye are of God, little children, mm -hmm. and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How do you know that the greater one is on the inside of you? Amen. He that is in the world. Yes, what is that scripture? Romans 12 said, be not conformed to this world. The, the, uh, the Greek word cosmos, amen, to, it means to adapt to the, amen, to, to, to the to the structure, the lifestyle of this world. We don't supposed to live like this world. We don't supposed to think like this world. We don't supposed to love like this world. Our motive is supposed to be different. Our families, our marriages are supposed to be different. Listen to this. Wow. Didn't God say this? This kind of got me. God said, he said, listen to this. God said, I'm married to the backslider. <laughs> God said, the person that left me, I'm married to him. Y'all don't get Jesus. <laughs> Y'all don't see how much God loves us. God said, he said, I'm married to the backslider. He was talking about Israel who had slid away and began to worship other God. God said, even though they left me, I'm still married to them. They're mine. Mm. They, 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 they didn't divorce me. They left me. 
And brothers, I mean, sometimes people leave us and they'll walk out. But, but, but sometimes, this is what God did to Israel. God used what they did against them to bring rebuke to their life. He raised up other nations to bring them back. I mean, you know, sometimes things are happening in your life and God God be telling you, God said, Victor, leave it alone. Hey, hey, I'm going to use this for your good. Just leave it alone. I mean, you know, sometimes God has to turn certain things over. Pa Paul said it this way. Paul said, sometimes we got to turn, turn, Paul said, sometimes we got to turn people over. We got to let them go. For the destruction of the flesh. Sometimes, amen, since we want to obey God, God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them what they want. I'm going to put them in a position where I'm going to let them have it, but I ain't going to be there to help them. I'm going to let the enemy run them right back to you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God will give you just what you want because you won't listen. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said something to me this week and made me think about something. And I said, you know, and, and you know, you got to be careful what you ask God for. Uh -huh. And I found this out sometimes that you, you, Sure, God will never let you go through something and don't show you what you're dealing with. And it hit me the other day. God said, Victor, he said, he said, I showed you. You told me that you could handle it. I said, Dad, I said, I sure did. I said, I did say that. But, but I realized that I can't handle it without you. Amen. So, I don't tell anybody, when God shows you something, you better pay attention. Because you will cause yourself to suffer by being disobedient to the Spirit. Because sometimes God will tell you. And I know I hear God, and sometimes God, God told me one time, He said, Victor, if you, if you do it, you're going to have to deal with something. And He let me see it. And just like a knucklehead, I did it. And I had to suffer through what I did. But God said to me, he said, the next time, you'll know. Don't get in a hurry for nothing. Stand still. Don't move. Uh, amen. Till I get ready to, 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 to move you. And the Bible said, be anxious for nothing but what? In, uh, but in prayer and supplication. You know, to be in, you know, we, we, we got to pray. Amen. Sometimes we want things, but sometimes God said, it ain't right yet. It ain't ready. It ain't ready. Don't you go pick that off. That, don't, don't pick it off. Because if you pick it off too early, son, it, it, it ain't going to taste right. It's, it's going to be sour. Amen. But, but if you let it stay on the vine long enough, on the tree long enough, it'll right. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we pick things and we put it in our lives and we do things that, 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 that's not ready yet. Yes. All right. All right. We grab people. We want relationships so bad. We just grab people. God trying to tell you, it ain't right. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Come on. And the thing about it, we see it. <laughs> but like Eve and Adam, but God, it looked good. But God keeps saying, leave it on the tree. Yes, yes. When it's ripe, you'll be able to eat it, and, and it won't kill you. All right. Yes, yes. It won't destroy you. So don't, don't, don't get in a hurry to do nothing. Whatever it is that God, you, won't, you believe in God for, don't get in a hurry. Because I found out love ain't blind. No, it's not. People said love blind. Love ain't blind. That's a lie. <laughs> love is not blind. <laughs> you might be blind, but love ain't blind. <laughs> God show us stuff and we look right past it. <laughs> we look right past it. Because it's what we want. And all the time, God telling you, don't you do it. Don't you do it. <laughs> but let him just swept off my feet. <laughs> and you just let the snake in your house. 
and you'll suffer the consequences because you heard the wrong well you you ignore God's voice and you listen to the voice of your own mind your own desires and it'll kill you every time Yes. Now I ain't telling you that there's some things that gonna come through our life that's gonna try and test us. And it don't care who it is. You can be, you can have a wife that's filled with the Holy Ghost laying there, casting out demons, brother. Amen. Our husband, either way it go. Either way it go, tests are coming. Yes. Yes. So the test, it, it don't matter whether you're saved or unsaved. The Bible said a storm coming to both houses. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But it's what you build your house up on is whether it's going to stand, whether it's going to make it. Yes. Yes. You know? And what I'm saying, build your house on love. Build your life on love. Jesus said, wise men hear these sayings and they obey them. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, a foolish man build his house upon his emotions, upon his feelings, upon sand. Mm -hmm. The sand represents emotion, flesh. You build your house on emotion. Oh, oh, girl, I just met the beautiful, handsome man in the world. Oh, God, God, boy, he prophesied, he prayed. And then you, you're building your house on emotion, but you ain't heard God. All right. Yes. All yes. right. Yes. Oh, she's so fine, preacher. Oh, man, man bro, bro, did, you, did, did you see that? <laughs> but, but you're building it based upon what you see and what you feel. And you're not building it upon the Holy Spirit and upon the love of God and upon the leadership of the Spirit. You're right. Yes. And let me know sooner or later, all that fatuation and all that stuff you see going to fade away. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. If it's not built up on the God kind of love. Amen. So we got to make sure we build our house right. We got to make sure we build our house on love, on the God kind of love. Mm -hmm. And we got to make sure we have that heart of love. And I feel this, I feel this, I heard this, and I feel this deep in my spirit. Some of us got to let some stuff go. We're still holding some stuff. Mm -hmm. To our people, things that have happened in our past, mm -hmm. we got to let it go, we got to forgive. Mm -hmm. Because we all make mistakes. Amen. But we got to release the past in order for God to take us into our future. How many know that your past will keep you from your future? Yes. If you hold all that unforgiveness, anger, and, and hatred, why, why would God give you a, 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 a wife and you still mad at the one that you had before? So when you marry this one, you're going to have the same anger, bitterness, and mistrust, and you're going to be abusive and everything else, but, you know, mistrusted. Why? Because you haven't got all the unforgiveness and hatred out of you, amen, about the other person. Yes, yes, amen. So you take all that mess with you, and you go, God, what happened? I thought we was the perfect couple. But we never deal with the unforgiveness, the anger, and the rage. And you know something? Hey, can I say this? We're going to go home. You got to pay attention. Because you want to marry somebody that uh, be in a relationship, whether it's marriage, whether it's friendship. You want to be in a relationship with somebody that's walking in love. You got a friend and you want to be nice. You want to bless people in your friend. Well, why are you blessing them? Don't give them nothing. Mm -hmm. They don't need nothing. Well, what kind, what kind of person is that? For you to be hanging around. Mm -hmm. If God put in your heart to bless somebody, hey, man, should nobody be trying to tell you not to do it? Right. I, I, I do. I watch people's attitudes. I see how people treat other people. You got to, mm -hmm. amen. And, and that's one thing we got to make sure that, that uh, 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 is that person, how, how they love their family, how they treat other people. Mm. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you know what I found out? People will put up a front. But Miles Monroe said something that I think that was very powerful, and I realize how true it is now, that in time, true character will come out. Yeah. It may be 30 years. It may be 20 years. It may be five years. It may be uh, the day after you marry them. <laughs> <laughs> and everything can start coming 
down. You go, oh Jesus, what did I just do? That's why you got to be deserving. Not that you judge and try to go, no, no. Because one thing about it, the Bible said, with the Lord join together, let no man put asunder. If yes. God connect you to somebody, God gonna let you see their heart. Yes, yes. God will let you see what's in that person. And that's why you got to have that relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. We're we going to go. Let me, let me read this part. Well, Amen. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. That's right. When you love God, so that's how you know me. That's how they're going to know you know me. By the love that you show. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knows not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. What is that, John 3.16? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. So love is giving. You can't say you love somebody and don't give. Yes. Somebody said love is not love to it's giving away. <laughs> Amen. You you give, you share, you you bless that person. You I mean you love your kids and you, because you work for them and you provide for them because you love. You gotta give. You you show your that ain't the only way you show your love, but that's a way that you show your love that you provide for. Them. And it's the same way for one another. Amen. When our brothers and sisters die, we ought to show love. We ought to show kindness. We ought to pick them up. We said before that the word kindness in the Hebrew actually the, from the word it means to bend down and to pick up. How many know that we're supposed to, I mean, it means to kneel. We're supposed to pick one another up. When we fall, the Bible said, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. We should never be pushing one another down. We should be picking one another up. We should be forgiving. We should be loving one another. And I know people ain't used to that. Pastor, well, you talk about all this love. People do, they get uncomfortable when you talk about love because we haven't been taught how to love. We haven't been taught how to be affectionate toward one another without it being sexual or, 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 or something like that, without an ulterior motive. People think you start being kind when a hug them or, or be nice to them. They think it's sexual. But I don't know that. that I mean, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that way. It should be about love. In the Bible, the Bible said they, 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 what, holy kiss. They, they, they greeted each other with kisses on each other. They said, we're going to do that. But what I'm saying is this. You, you know, that's the way they show kindness and affection. They hug and they loved each other. They showed affection. They showed kindness. You know, and you, you know, I, yeah. But anyway, we need to learn how to love one another and to love others. Because I know that when people come into the house of God, what they're going to look for, they want to see what kind of environment, what kind of love is in the church. They come out, they, they, they're a church. Let us, what, what, what the love at? Do they get along? Are, amen. Are they showing kindness toward one another? Because the Bible says you'll know them what? By their fruit. So you walk into a church and it ain't no fruit. It's, 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 it's amen. They have a church. <laughs> But ain't no fruit. It's just like the fig tree Jesus saw, wasn't it? When the fig tree represented the church, Jesus came to the tree. It had leaves on it. It was the right season, but it was not producing fruit. What did Jesus do? Jesus said, hey amen, I'm going to curse this tree. And that's why Jesus said, I was hungry. I came to get something to eat, and it did not produce anything. I mean, when God comes to his house, he's looking for fruit. Hmm. And then he turned around, he said in the same chapter, he said, How can you say you love me and ain't your brother that you see every day? He said, The truth, you are lie, and the truth is not in you. That's a hard statement. God said, You are lie, and the truth is not in you. How can you love me and you can't even see me? That's right. Oh, and hate your brother that you see every day. 
Well, love can be hard, can it? Dig up a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> People get quiet when you start talking about love, don't you? <laughs> but, but it's okay. But because we, we need the Bible. James said we behold ourselves in a mirror. You know, when we behold the glory of God and we're changed. How do you know that we, we, we got to be willing to come to the mirror and look and say, God, you know what? Ooh, I didn't know that was in me. Help me, Lord. Hmm. Help, me to, help me to love. Help me to forgive. Yes. Help me to show kindness. Yes. Help me. And it's not a message of condemnation. It's a message, amen, really it's about, amen, it's about love. It's about who we're supposed to be. We're God's little children. And we're supposed to love one another, and we're supposed to show love wherever we go. Amen. And sometimes it is, it's almost disappointing when you look at the church. They have a church. Right now, we can go down the street. Somebody probably got a church pack. That ain't judging nobody. But ain't no love. Whole lot of leaves. Mm -hmm. I, I was watching this. They had it on Facebook yesterday. And it's amazing. And I know somebody ain't going to like what I'm about to say, but, but, but I'm going to say it anyway. They, they had, which I was talking about on Facebook yesterday, how that pastors are now teaching people it's okay to have sex and not be married. Wow. They okay. They really okay because when you don't say that, you give consent. <laughs> you ain't bringing no correction. Okay, yeah, we've all probably done it in our time. <laughs> but it don't mean it's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so ain't no sense in the we ain't no sense in being lying. That like we 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 perfect. We never did nothing. Yeah. We, we 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 all have done something. That's right. But now that we're born again, we want to try to do things God's way. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And ain't no sense of me sitting back, grinning at you and smiling, and I I, I know what you're doing, and, and, and don't come and say, hey, guess what? You you know, because as a pastor, you got to be able to deal with every part of a person's life. Now, you do it in love. You ain't trying to judge them. You ain't trying to hurt them. But I'm supposed to lay the standard of God out to you. Amen. Amen. And I can't stop preaching because you're paying more tithes. And, right. and if, I, I, if I talk about it, you're going to quit. You're going to go down the street where ain't nobody saying that. I'll wave at them. Go on. Bye. Because <laughs> if I got to preach to the wall, I'll preach to the wall. But I'm going to tell the truth. That's right. Amen. And I'm going to tell it on me first. That's right. Amen. But I do know this, through the grace of God, we can do anything. We can overcome. Yes, right. You don't have to be an adulteress. You don't have to be a drunk. You don't have to be on drugs. You don't, I mean, you don't have to do all this crazy stuff your flesh want to do. I mean, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will help you. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the church and I go, Jesus, sometimes I just want to run. I see it. I see it all the time. Ooh, Jesus. Okay, y'all. In this was manifested the love of God to us because that God sent His only Son, only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. So we must live through Christ. Mm -hmm. Here it is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the perpetuation for our sins or our atonement or as a sacrifice. Beloved, if God so love us, we ought also to love one another. That's right. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfect in us. How, listen to this. How is love made perfect? When you, when, 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 when you love somebody else, when you give it away. He said, your love is made perfect when you love your brother. Hmm. I, love being perfected. Love being completed. Love is complete when I show love toward my brothers and sisters. If you're not showing love, 
Then your love ain't nothing. I love you. But I talk about you. I love you, but I don't show no kindness, no gentleness to you. Wow. I guess I was supposed to talk about this today because folks get quiet when they talk about love, don't they? No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and His love is perfected in us. Love is being perfected in us. Because we are complete. But love brings the fullness of God. And I mean that sometimes, wow. Well, hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you got to be broken to love. Amen. Sometimes you got to go through hell to learn how to love and forgive. You do. Because Jesus said it this way. To whom much is forgiven. To, uh, that's who love more. If you think you ain't never did nothing. You're going to walk around with an arrogant self-righteous attitude. And think you're better than other people. But when you know God has forgiven you. And raised you up from all the mess that you've been through. Then you learn. You, you say hold up man. I know where I come from. So I ain't got no choice but to show love. I can't, I can't walk around with that kind of attitude. But people that are arrogant and full of pride. God going to have to break them. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. But I'm saying God hate a haughty look. Proud look. And the first thing God gonna do, kick you off that chair. <laughs> it, it, it is um, wow, yes, Dad, I heard that. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Sometimes. God had to prove himself to you. <laughs> yes, he will. You don't think you're so smart and so intelligent, so great. God said, I'm going to close every door. Your degree won't get you in there. Won't nothing get you in there till you get your heart right. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen to people. That, that, that was so arrogant and so proud, that they, they was well educated, well, I mean, real, real smart, but but because they were so proud and so full of arrogance and self righteousness, God, 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 I saw God do this to this person. God fixed it where they had to work at a restaurant making hamburgers. Mm. Jesus. When nobody hired them for nothing. This guy sitting making hamburgers got a master's degree in computer science and and and, 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 and had a couple more degrees. Wow. Who was that? Was that King Nebuchadnezzar? Mm -hmm. That was so full of pride and so full of arrogance. Mm -hmm. God said, listen, he said, I'm going to cause the nature of a beast to come up on you and you're going to eat grass like a cow. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to show you that I'm the most high God. God, the only person in that something, can take the nature of a beast and put it up on a man. <laughs> he was eating grass and wasn't aware of it until God removed it. Y'all, y'all, I'm telling you, and it's best to humble yourself. And you say, God, hey, Whatever you want me to do, that's what I do. Because if you keep trying to do it yourself, and don't do it God's way, God, God's sitting up there saying, I got to keep, I, I, they ain't going to do it my way, Victor. I'm going to have to keep up. I'm going to have to get them off of that horse. Mm -hmm. Got to do them like I did Paul. I'm going to knock them off that horse every time they stand up. 
Because they keep trying to do it their way. Yes, yes. And, and, and I'm going to say this, Brother Sean. I say, I say this. People think they're getting away with stuff. Mm -hmm. They ain't really getting away. But if you stand on God's word, God going to take care of everything else. Amen. You stay in love. You stay in unforgiveness. I mean, stay in forgiveness. God going to take care of your enemies. The dis and some of them ain't God's enemies. Some of them are just disobedient and hard headed children. Yes, right. yes. So when you say because people are disobedient and hard headed, they ain't God's children, they're just hard headed children. We got hard headed children, though, some of us. Yes. Amen. And we gotta we gotta stay on them. It don't mean you don't love them, but but it means soon you, you gotta correct, you gotta bring order. Yes, yes. But but I do, I feel like God's saying this to us. If if we'll get our and if, if we'll keep our hearts right. Talk one another and talk other people. God said, I'll bless you. I'll turn your captivity. Yes. I'll turn your circumstances around. Yes, we, we should be jealous of one another. I ain't jealous of the one. I ain't jealous of Je Sean. I ain't jealous of nobody in here. Amen. And we should be jealous of one another. Somebody do something and your nose go up in the air. What, what do you think they're doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Envy, jealous, strife. They see you walk down the street with new hair and new shoes. They get mad and get jealous. Hey Amen. You can go get some too. That's right. Pray for them. Rejoice with them. God will bless you. That's right. But he ain't going to bless you if you're not walking in love. That's right. And, and that's what I just, I just feel to say that this morning. Is that, that God says it's time for us to, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to pour the agape love of God on the inside of us. Because when the church see us, they ought to see fruit. That's right. And I said before, when God gave me that vision of that tree, God said to me, he said, a tree that, that does not bear fruit, God said, is useless to me. What can I do with it? Can you be saved and be useless? Yeah. Here you get it. Yes, you can. Because the Bible, Jesus said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Mm-hmm. How many when you walk in love, you can draw people to Christ? You can draw people in your family. You can draw people from the streets into the house of God. But when you're not walking in love, then ain't nobody going to follow you. They're going to go, I heard that preacher down there cussing last night. He's in here preaching. Well, I want to go to your church. preachers, pastors at the club, at the go-go club, man. And I just said to myself, God, I can't believe it. And I just said, well, what you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, they were about to be leaders too. <laughs> but I, I said, I know I shouldn't be here, but I know you shouldn't be here either. <laughs> and you're going to ride the pulpit the next morning. And tell me about Jesus. <laughs> you know what people call all men have sinned become short of the glory of God. You just you just making an excuse for your mess. Right. <laughs> and I'm a, James said it this way. He said, if a man religion don't change him, it's vain. Mm. It's empty. So if you said you love Jesus, that Jesus is your Lord, and he had changed you, what good is it? I was talking about this the other day. God, who was that Gandhi said it? He said, I would have became a Christian until I met one. Mm -hmm. What are people saying when they meet us? That's right. That's right. Do we have the right attitude? Are we walking in love? So let's walk in love. Let's demonstrate the love of God wherever we go. Amen. Amen. Well, anybody need prayer? We'll pray for you. Amen. Love is a message of transformation and change. Mm -hmm. People don't like change. Y'all know that. <laughs> I mean, all the time, they don't want to change. They just want to go to church. Mm -hmm. Girl, we had fun at church Sunday. <laughs>